Hi and welcome to um, the Bitnation, Lebanon and Kairos Hangout uh, on blockchain law and jurisdictions. So with me today, I have Federico Ask, is the founder and CEO of Kairos, and Richard Likia from Lebanon, the founder of Lebanon and, and president. Um, as well as Sonia and Kenneth, who has been working with both uh, legal integration in Bitnation and Lebanon. My name is Suzanne Pukowski Bentonhoff, and I'm the founder and CEO of Bitnation. And uh, we're building a jurisdiction called Pantheia on the blockchain. We're going to talk about a range of different topics concerning the blockchain, including how it integrates with nation state jurisdictions, how we can do criminal law versus contract law on the blockchain, um, and how we tend to integrate and operate as a wider ecosystem in this space. Um, but first, um, I would like each project introduce itself a bit more. Um, with, uh, for those who don't know Lebanon, can you give a quick introduction of what Lebanon is and what you're up to? Yeah, we're a small country between Croatia and Serbia, which was incorporated three years ago almost. And uh, we've got a whole million people that uh, support the creation of the new country. And we're also looking into ways how to integrate blockchain solution to our jurisdiction. Uh, we are planning to issue our own token that will work both as a currency, collateral, for the jurisdiction and shares uh, of the of the state itself, um, I think uh, one of the ways that differentiates us from other movements and from other states that we want to have purely voluntary tax system. We want to incentivize people to pay taxes through allowing them to become shareholders of the country they are living in, and we want to have a very fast uh, jurisdiction based on some of the ideas that Claros has put together in form of decentralized jury systems. Great, thank you. Um, Federico yes. do you want to introduce um, Clara? Sure, so Claros is an arbitration system that works on blockchain, right? So uh, let me give you a quick example for people to understand how it works. Imagine I am in Argentina, I want to hire some software developer uh, a website for me. So imagine I, I find a guy in, I don't know, in Guatemala or in Liberland or whatever. Uh, and so we do a contract and the guy does this website for me and he delivers a product. And then I'm not happy with, um, with the product because I expected something better. So I'm not going to go to a lawyer in Guatemala to sue the guy for like a $1,000 suit, right? So the world, as it has evolved the technology, is um, facing lots of these disputes, right? Because we are already living in um, this global world connected by networks. And so in this uh, webinar, we are like people from, I guess, like five different countries. So, and all the infrastructure built by nation states is purely jurisdictional and built with the technologies of the 18th century. Like they did the best they could with what they knew in the 18th century. So now imagine if I, uh, with the developer, I instead of paying him directly, I put the money into a smart contract. So, uh, and then if everything goes right, money is paid and everybody's happy. But if there is a dispute, so the, the money will stay locked. It's going to select a jury of experts and websites. And these guys are going to um, analyze the evidence. They are going to be selected by a special mechanism involving a token. So we can discuss that later. It uses game theory. But the main point is that they are selected with the token and they have every incentive to be honest while they uh, analyze the evidence and they vote. So and depending on how they vote, uh, so the money is going to be transferred one way or the other. And so that's how the uh, scleros mechanism solves this dispute. Great. Thank you so much, Federico. Um, Sonia and Kenneth, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Sonia. Uh, I've been working as a lawyer for 11 years and for the last three years uh, I have been legal advisor to Bit for Liberland and uh, since last year uh, I also work for Bit Nation. 
Uh, I'm a, a big uh, technology enthusiast and uh, I would like to offer my full service to both of the projects uh, to connect the traditional legal system and what can we do with the new technology, uh, especially the blockchain and uh, also artificial intelligence. And as Federico said, the, the world is changing. Uh, the judicial system has to adapt to technology and the regulations have to completely embrace it that uh, we are having completely different way of business and uh, we have to change the rules and uh, I'm very happy uh, uh, to be part of this pioneering project uh, which will change everything uh, for the benefit of all of us because we see how jurisdictions functions and how we are all drowning in uh, bureaucracy and the long uh, pro procedures which are not bringing solutions very often and just spend a lot of money and we would all like to uh, bring something new and uh, I hope uh, we will uh, find solutions very very soon and that people uh, around us uh, will embrace all these changes and that uh, all our uh, projects will be very successful. Great, thank you Samia. Um, Kenneth, um, I'm not sure if you, you're on mute, but would you like to say something as well? Yeah, hello, I'm, I'm just following, but um, as with Sonia, I've been working also with Liberland for almost uh, three years, but now working also with BitNation, uh, assisting Sonia mostly. And uh, I, I, I also see this um, bigger perspective here, joining technology and law and agreements. It's, uh, it's extremely exciting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Great, thank you. Um, so a quick background on uh, BitNation. Um, we've been operating since 2014. We're a decentralized borderless voluntary nation operating on the blockchain, the world's first blockchain. We are our Pangea jurisdiction that we're building right now. Is um, it's basically on the back end. It's basically a um, blockchain agnostic mesh network, and that we're connecting with Ethereum. Uh, chain faster that we're planning to integrate at US and Bitcoin via Rootstock yeah, um, as well as parts of um, other chains in the near future and um, in the front end is basically a mobile chat yeah, meaning that people can be agreement extremely easily in just a chat which which is completely decentralized and peer to peer resilience and encrypted yeah. and then on top of that we're building additional speed resolution infrastructure of which, for instance, Claros and uh, the, their crowd jury that uh, Claros is, is one of the arbitration systems. And um, obviously identification and reputation is another important component in which I will talk a little bit more about later on in the conversation. And um, yeah, you will be able to download it by the end of the month from the usual app stores, and I hope you do, and give us feedback. Um, so, uh, to talk a little bit more about, so we're all kind of working in the same space, all our projects have a lot of overlaps, and we aim to bring the ecosystem together more, to be more collaborative, because we all need each other's technologies and, and um, real-world experience, and, uh, and and other things, right? Um, so to start a little bit, uh, um, the first question I would like to uh, to talk to talk more about uh, is um, basically how each project uh, is looking at blockchain law. Um, so, for instance, are you going to use an existing legal code, let's say common law or Sharia law or something else, or do you consider that code is law itself? So whatever the contract say is the law and there is no other law around it. Um, so uh, if we start with you, Vitten, what is Liberland's stance on legal codes? Yeah, first of all, you know, I, I would like to say that uh, the the solution for our jurisdiction is coming together a bit slow, but we already have a constitution which 
very nicely sets forward the basic principles behind which Liberland wants to work. Uh, we don't want to basically do a an existing jurisdiction. We want to create a completely new one. But we also want to give the juries, the juries that will be based on similar solution like Kleros or possibly even within the Kleros ecosystem, we want to give them the freedom uh, to actually interpret uh, the constitution and, and uh, use the laws more as a recommendation than something straightforward. Uh, but on the other hand, we will basically create a system of precedence that will create the or, or make new uh, systems or make new laws for Liberland out of these precedents, just like in the common law. But we honestly have even a problem with the legacy systems that the British British uh, legal system brings together. Of course, it's an easy solution and it will probably be applied in the ZD zones in Honduras. Uh, but on the other hand, I believe here is a time for creating something completely new and uh, and it will be possible to do it with the combination of very strict let's say republican constitution reasonable set of laws that will be used again more as a recommendation to jurors than uh, as something which is completely straightforward it's the similar situation is for example in singapore <clears throat> where part of the constitution is completely uh, recommend they recommending uh, the the rules that should be set but it's not there as something fixed I hope I answered your question uh, a bit, Susan. Yeah, great. That was really interesting. Yeah, um, it is true that, I mean, when it comes to contract law, I agree that common law seems to be by far the most modulable, evolved code of law. Um, but yeah, it's also, I mean, that's applied today in most jurisdictions. Uh, uh, yeah, so from our side, so the, the type of law, uh, we are agnostic about that. So uh, users can, within the Clerus ecosystem, they can create different subcourts, and each subcourt is going to uh, solve disputes according to the type of law chosen by, by, the, by users, right? So in one subcourt, users can decide that they're going to use common law in another one, they can use Sharia law, and in another one, they can use uh, and whatever kind of law they prefer. So the, the thing is that um, each contract, so when they do an agreement, uh, they have to, at the beginning, before the dispute happens, they have to define what type of law it's going to use to be solved. And then when choosing the jurors, Kleros is going to select jurors according to the rules uh, that was were stated in the contract. So, they are going to say to shooters, hey, in this subcourt, the disputes need to be solved using common law, right? Uh, or using whatever law and whatever type of evidence. And so, Kleros is built on a principle, on two principles. First principle is uh, voluntary, right? Parties have to agree to the use of Kleros before the dispute uh, arises. And second, it is built on specialization. It's choosing the jurors with the right set of skills to solve um, the, the dispute that uh, at, at hand, right? And so among the skills of the jurors is the knowledge of the type of law that is going to be used in the subcourt, be it Jaraya law, common, or, or whatever type of law the users have chosen. Great, yeah, we, we yep. actually have a similar system on uh, Pangea, a polylegal system. So basically, both nations that are playing on top of Pangea can obviously choose what code of law, if any, or however many they want to apply. And people who do individual contracts outside of any nations on Pangea can also choose themselves which code of law they want to refer to. And in addition to that, just like Richard Lincoln say about um, common law, how it evolves through precedent. We also have a nomic system for contracts where people rate uh, smart contracts and uh, how well they perform to, to the and how good people are rating smart contracts as well. So, um, so basically, I think out of that, over time, it will evolve a sort of 
uh, just like Vitz said, a sort of code of law of itself, right? Uh, based on best practices. So. But that's obviously going to take years of trial and error. And as we know, the smart contracts still, um, I mean, solidity have a lot of problems still. And uh, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of great smart contracts, but also a lot of really bad ones. Um, but yeah, it's going to take a long time to create a big stack of very high functioning smart contracts that are both user friendly and secure and fit to purpose. Um, but I found it, one thing I found really interesting when we think about blockchain law is that when it comes to contract law, it seems self evident, right? Um, I buy a car from you, we sign a contract, we put the money in escrow. If there is any problem, we do a dispute resolution. <laughs> Whatever. But how about criminal law on the blockchain? That is a much more challenging issue, right? Uh, so let's say if you're just standing peacefully in the street and someone comes and hits you on the head, right? How, do you, how does the blockchain deal with that? Um, I think this is particularly challenging for someone like. Yeah, so, uh, so but how how does Liberland deal with like criminal? Um, I think you're on mute. Fit. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, in our case, well, we are already having that uh, issues uh, during the, let's say, initial phase of building of Liberland. We already got on board a couple of criminals. And the, the, our merit system basically is a, a way how to make sure that people that, uh, people that instead of contributing to Liberland, um, when they hurt Liberland, for example, and this is just between a state and an individual, but I think it can also work between individuals that uh, the merit accounts of individuals can get into the minus minuses basically the, the the evaluation of how much they have hurt the uh, society can be can be basically monetized and can be put into a, a negative asset uh, which I believe is a interesting way how to how to also punish people for something that they have done and cannot really compensate it at the moment. Uh, but some people have done that and then they figure out that it's not a good idea to be in minus with the jurisdiction. Let me recall uh, the guy called Benny that uh, returned not just the money that he stole from Liberland, but he returned like six times more. Uh, so he offset his initial robbery uh, by compensating it and then paying some voluntary tax on the top. And uh, I think that's the way how the things should be. Instead of people being on the on the red list, they can get out of them by simply fixing whatever they have done. They don't have to necessarily go directly to the jail. Uh, but of course, some people that kill other people in liberal jurisdiction will go to jail and they will lose their merits with the jurisdiction. And they might also get their uh, accounts into minuses if that will make some economic sense. Uh, so basically the the balance, the let's say the balance of energy between the state and the individual would be evaluated through our tokens that will work again, both as a share, as a currency, as a voting right, and as a, as a collateral for the damage that you could create within the jurisdiction. Um, have you guys seen that episode of uh, Black Mirror called, um, I can't recall the name yet. Uh, the, the reputation one, that they, they send this little yeah. card. <laughs> right. Yes. What is it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah which one is it? Which, which, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh, I can't recall the name right now. Um, and one episode was about this reputation system on your phone when you're uh, behaving that people uh, are not accepting that you're losing your points. And uh -huh. well, this is this is the Chinese this is the Chinese system. We are not going to yeah. have that. And it's going to be purely based on the on the law. We are not going to evaluate our citizens' behavior on social network 
or others. So <laughs> it's a different approach, but of course, like uh, um, I believe if the if the ju jurisdiction is just and then is trying to do the best as it can from beginning uh, to set the st rule straight and make it make it right, then I think it's a good way how to how to make a functioning society. Because you know when you hurt somebody, when you steal some money, y the Claros judges will uh, evaluate that. They will take the merits from one account and put it to account of the other person. So these things probably will not happen, right? And the only the only concern that I have, of course, is that the system could be misused, and there must be some balances in the system in built. Uh, but I think again that the, the the idea about decentralized jurors. And when you appeal, instead of three jurors, you get six jurors. When you appeal, instead of uh, six, you get 12 jurors. This is a very smart concept, which makes it almost impossible to manipulate the judges, unlike in, in the regular societies. And it might be a healthy concept uh, to get the resolutions through and make really just cases. I think I think that, uh, that you make a very good point, um, but you no. Know, Sometimes we fail to, to realize, so when we speak about the Black Mirror episode and the Chinese system that Vid was mentioning, that um, basically what this does is like take to an extreme something that has always existed because criminal law and basically any kind of law system has always enforced the penalties through reputation. Um, I know maybe uh, in the Greek, the ancient Greek has this concept of ostracism, right? That if you did something very bad to the uh, community, it's not that you went to jail, but they like kick you out of the community. So and you had to go live to the, with the barbarians. So like it's not different than being expelled or like banned from Facebook for breaking the use code, right? Um, I think the difference is how this decision is made. Uh, if it's made in a centralized and quite corrupt way when you can be affected your right to freedom and property by some bureaucrat uh, centralized uh, and who doesn't really have to give any explanations to anyone or if this decision is done by a decentralized court with every possible guarantee from the point of view of game theory and science that uh, the trial is going to be fair but i so i i think that the reputation will still be um a key part of the enforcement of, of any like rule system. So that's hard to avoid, I guess. Yeah, I agree. I mean, a, a big part of Pangea is obviously the reputation system as well. But, you know, in comparison to, to VIT, we kind of have a luxury problem because, you know, uh, because we are digital. So so we don't have to worry too much about criminal law at this time right um i mean we're not at this time responsible for our citizens physical security which is a whole other sort of challenge um so the way we have built a reputation system is basically we only have positive reputation to avoid the kind of black mirror uh, scenario and but we are incentive financially incentivizing building up a reputation so that people earn uh, PAC tokens when they build it up. But we also designed it in a way so that reputation can't be bought uh, or sold for money or earned through popularity or attention. So that reputation is strictly merit-based based on when you successfully enter into a contract or complete a contract or resolve a dispute attached to a contract. Um, <clears throat> And because we also want to avoid the kind of, yeah, the dystopian social world order. And they, you know, Federico, you mentioned being expelled from the community and that you mentioned um, the, the shiny social media, which is like in pure 1984. Um, and so, you know, so since we are only operating digitally at the moment, we have the luxury of kind of be able to experiment with with positive reputation, you know, carrot over stick yeah? um, at this time. Um, but obviously as, and I, so I think that's a major difference between uh, like 
virtual nations and, uh, and virtual governance service providers like Keras versus physical, uh, let's say, city states or micro nations or intentional communities or even, you know, a condominium association or something like that, right? How they handle it. So I think in, in a post nation state world, um, I think uh, physical communities will come down to have their own set of criminal law implementations while uh, digital, digital communities, digital service providers will provide more of the contract law. Um, what do you guys think about that? Very. Um, it's um, yeah. I would like to, uh, to make a point uh, about um, having perspective on law in general. Um, when we are, I was listening to Federico's uh, talk on TED, and uh, as we also like to uh, um, compare Bit Nation uh, with uh, Airbnb or with Uber, um, we have to uh, make conclusion that uh, law uh, and legal procedures are uh, not service what we are choosing. And mostly when we find ourselves in a situation uh, that we have to attend certain procedures because we are uh, trying to avoid our obligations or we did something wrong. And um, this is the attitude uh, which we have to have in mind when trying to create uh, some credible uh, solution, especially in a digital form. Because uh, people are willing to do everything what is possible uh, to avoid their consequences. And uh, this is what smart contracts uh, can make a big revolution. Because I think just the definition of smart contract as it is and the way we will make them for each and every topic, of course, we will start with more simple uh, cases uh, that we have to be somehow predictable. Uh, what can be uh, what can go wrong and uh, how to achieve uh, from both sides uh, to come to conclusion that they want to uh, have this smart contract that they want to put their money in escrow their crypto or fiat or whatever they will want and because uh, when it comes to disputes uh, it's much harder to uh, bring people uh, especially from digital position now you know you don't have to attend uh, anywhere, no one will invite you and uh, the problem of enforcement is what we have to deal with. And uh, how uh, how are people uh, looking at re their reputation and is it important to them or will they abuse the whole system just to get what they want and uh, run away and uh, open some maybe new nation uh, or change their nation or change their identity. And I think this uh, topic Suzanne would like for sure to say something because uh, we would like to avoid the uh, multiple identity uh, as much as also uh, as I read for Claros that would like to have anonymous jury and uh, I had certain I wouldn't say criticism but uh, I had the idea of uh, some case in which you have two parties and you have like uh, three anonymous uh, arbitrators who you don't know at all and you don't know actually how their identities were created and um, it's a it's a comprehensive topic uh, it's easy for us to talk in theory but once we when we start doing all this we will collect a lot of data so that we know how to adjust so maybe first versions of apps will not be the uh, uh, the best solution but we have to see how it runs in the practice and uh, uh, what can uh, what can we make better and how can we make that system is uh, recognized and accepted by people that they really trust when when I open my uh, identity and uh, that all the other participants, uh, uh, if they choose this jurisdiction, if Pangea is juris jurisdiction in which we operate, then they have to comply with the framework they have chosen. And um, well, I, I, <clears throat> you know, if we go back to like mirror, right? <laughs> I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but it's just such a great show. Um, so in the last season of Black Mirror, uh, season four, there was one episode with don't, this. Don't spoil season four, Susan, please. I didn't. I didn't watch that yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sorry. I, I won't. I won't say like. Just some general, some some general concept, but not the exact one. <laughs> okay. So basically, so there's a couple out driving, and 
you know, by accident, they run over some guy, right? And um, and uh, the guy dies, and it was like obviously an accident. But they don't call the police because you know they will go to jail and their whole life will be fucked, right? Even though it was clearly an accident and, and unintentional, and they both feel very sorry about it. And then you know. 10 years goes on, they are successful, they have careers that they love, the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. And th this thing starts to resurface again, and there is like an investigation going on that looks into people's memories and um, stuff like that. And then, so then they have so much to lose, right? Because they have like their family and their career. And, and just because they made this mistake once when they were young, which which, you know, to not ruin their lives and an accident, you know, then, then they start like killing more and more people to keep it a secret, you know, so, so, um, so the point of it, this is that, um, you know, if, if we don't have some sort of system of restorative justice, meaning that if someone does something, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, it doesn't mean they shouldn't be punished in some way, let's say, but if they think that the punishment is so bad, like in US prison, jails are so bad, right? And, and prison sentences are so long, people go to length to, to get out of it or to hide their evidence or whatever, right? And in that case, it creates a much worse, more dystopian society than if there is a way to actually recover from it. And one way is obviously to get a new identity, frankly. The ability to have several pseudonymous identities so that people know that, you know, it's gonna to be tough to move forward. They have to build up a brand new identity again. And it's gonna take time and effort and probably years to do it. But there is a way out of it. It's not like their life is over and they just, you know, have to go down the worst path in the universe just to, you know, because that, that, in my opinion, creates a very dangerous sort of society. Um, so I think, you know, uh, yeah, so, so that's just one thing to think about. Huh? Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I would say that, uh, yeah, would say that uh, it's hard that we uh, generalize about yeah. the such in specific cases, especially this one that you are mentioning. Um, uh, hopefully we will not have uh, guinea pigs that will be able to read their memory. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it is uh, from case to case, like we said that uh, precedence will be the one on which uh, the legal system will be based, because uh, this is one way of uh, approaching to create a uh, legal system because the uh, practice will create the rules and because uh, mm. it, it's much mu uh, much harder to to create some abstract regulations and then to see if it works or if it doesn't work but mostly to simplify that uh, people don't want to have like uh, 10 million regulations and this is why we are creating completely new systems so that uh, we can be more free to do what we want and uh, what basically is needed as we concluded is some kind of security and justice and uh, we will test the field how it goes and uh, maybe we now had luck with Benny <laughs> that the case was resolved in some positive way but maybe people will not be always willing to return their bitcoins I mean liberal and bitcoins so uh, we have to find uh, some middle solution uh, to prevent more, because uh, one way of uh, one way of legal system is prevention, and uh, it's uh, uh, up to creation of the, uh, like I said already, the best smart contracts, which will create the low level of disputes. This would be my attitude in in creation of smart contract. Indeed. And, and speaking of testing it in real world um, jurisdictions, um, so last question, because we're already soon done one hour. So um, I'm interested to talk about how this will work with existing legal jurisdictions for both 
uh, Bit Nation and Liberland and Clearos. Um, uh, I know, that you already had some encounters uh, with various nation states. Um, I mean, how how are how are nations generally reacting to Liberland and other jurisdictions too? Um, not necessarily nation state jurisdictions, but um, like you know, other international organizations and so on. Well, of course, Liberland is unrecognized by most of the countries, um, countries like Somaliland uh, that recognize Liberland are interacting just like any other nation or international relation that, that are created. So we basically, they respect our diplomatic immunity. They treat us as a, as a foreign uh, diplomats and uh, Apparently, there would be some call for extradition of criminals if something like that happened. <clears throat> so we can expect that the more countries recognizing Liberland, the more will be the Liberland uh, decisions by, by Liberland laws, by Liberland judges, the more they will be respected internationally. Uh, and of course, uh, that has to be done also through some memberships of different international bodies. Uh, but for now, you know, the, the Somaliland example is a good one where we've got some first experience uh, after the first recognition how how these things are working and uh, we were into uh, signing a set of um, uh, agreements for the next visit uh, that will go more deeply into this. Uh, but uh, you know, I just wanted to mention uh, the book that I wanted to at the beginning, the, the, the book written by Chas Holloway, if you had the time, look into that. Uh, read the first book. Before you finish reading the first book, there is a second book by him, The Fall of the of the Ruling Class. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really inspiring uh, to understand how he defines freedom, how he defines freedom. Um, you know the basic concepts that are that could be codified into smart contracts as a society because i think that book is actually a a solution to many of the questions that we uh, need to answer in, in the near future uh, also i understand bit nation is uh, trying to basically create a really universal environment for uh, jurisdictions but the liberland is looking into creating a, a, a most favorable jurisdiction for freedom, which is a slightly different agenda. But I definitely believe that on point of arbitration yeah, or other smart con contracts that you're going to create, we could really make them useful even within our own system and we could recognize it as a part of, of liberal and jurisdiction. Suzanne. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are lots of overlaps there and what carers as well. So definitely we need to work together to see in physical jurisdictions, so what can be affected in physical jurisdictions and so forth. Um, well, you know, can I, can I just one more thing, one thing I would really like to invite you to the conference that we have in Poland uh, that is actually the main topic is the things uh, that just Holloway wrote and he will present them in Poland in uh, from one month from now. And it would be great if you found the time and we could actually sit together. You could present again your system and there were like 500 people on the conference in Warsaw. Uh, and we will be talking directly about liberal and constitution, liberal and laws, but not, not that much as uh, generally about the smart contracts and the governance and uh, it's called the Freedom Fest. So I will send you an invitation. If you found the time to come over, it would be great. Uh, tickets to Warsaw are cheap and I think we can cover the accommodation. Okay, cool. great. And also it's gonna be in uh, Acapulco, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's right after Acapulco, right after the week, oh. 10 days after the end of oh. Acapulco, it, there is uh, gonna be a one day conference in Warsaw, which will be focused on the on Chas Holloway's book and other uh, jurisdiction related topics and smart contracts. Okay, excellent.
Um, Federico, you can check it with as well. Uh, I think it's third of March. I think uh, it's third of March, actually, if you check your calendar. I'm not 100% sure yeah. right now. Yeah, awesome. That's, that sounds great, yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right, guys, I will have to run. Um, I'm heading to Kustendorf Festival. There is a documentary about Liberland, and I want to meet Kustoritsa. So I have to be there before six. Uh, it was great talking to you. Uh, I, I promise to send you a link to the book. I promise to invite you to the conference. And I really have uh, some work to do on understanding what BitNation has created recently and uh, how we could really work closer in Claros. And I will try to do my homework until our next meeting. <laughs> Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. OK, thank you. Bye bye. Yes, bye, -bye. bye. Okay, um, let me wrap up this question as Federico. Um, what is your vision of? Okay, so you mentioned a freelancer working in one jurisdiction to provide a job to another jurisdiction. Um, okay, so let's say that this goes like way out of hand, the whole conflict it can't be resolved. Like, how, how will nation states, how? Are you planning to interact at all with nation state jurisdictions? Or are you just planning to operate completely outside of it? Or like what is CARE's relationship to that? So um our we have like two worlds in which we, we work. So one world is the blockchain world we already know, virtual, like the decentralized platforms. So we CLEROS can place, decentralized freelance work. Um, then, but imagine you have this platform for music, like Ujo Music, then people uh, upload their songs to uh, for others to stream it, them. So imagine I um, say that you upload a song that actually was my copyright. So um, Claros could be solved to, 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 could be used to solve this type of dispute. It could be used by, for example, Steemit, to uh, solve disputes ab ab about like one user accusing the other of breaking the terms and conditions. So tons of use cases in the decentralized world because you see different, for example, um, platforms that they are they all have disputes and they were all building arbitration for their disputes. But instead of each one of them building their own arbitration system and doing it poorly because this cannot be done very easily as a side project it's something that you really have to work a lot on so why don't you like outsource use your dispute to some project that is already focusing on that and is already doing a lot of game theory research and a lot of experimentation to solve these disputes so that is what is going on in the world of the blockchain and everything is enforced by smart contracts so but we also are interested in yeah so Federica, just to clarify, so for instance, um, let's say a platform like Upwork or eBay could just plug in the Claro system, right? And for their arbitration. Yeah. So. Those are centralized platforms. I was speaking about the decentralized platforms, but yeah, Upwork could say, okay, guys, and you're not going to take care anymore of the disputes in our ecosystem with our consumer dispute system, user support. So this is going to be done in Claros, and we will recognize Claros as the system to solve the dispute, and we will enforce whatever Claros decides. So, I mean, there is actually a quite good precedent for that because if you look at, I think in uh, eBay, uh, it's already outsourced actually to a company called Modria, if I remember it correctly. Yeah. So, correct. yeah. So, so it, that's actually a quite big market already. That's correct. So um, that's another use. So those you have like three three worlds, the decentralized platforms, the online centralized platforms, and then you have the world of nation states, right? Uh, um, whether, whether we like it or not. Right. So we are still going to live in a world of nation states for a couple of decades at least. So um, 
And we think that what we are building can improve the lives of the, of the citizens, of the small guys, right? So there are tons of disputes, like in insurance, in consumer, in consumer disputes, um, like you have this guy who uh, has a problem with the bank because he's being charged uh, for a, like something he didn't buy by a credit card company. And so he says, hey, I didn't buy this. And the credit card company says, yeah, you did buy this. So all these small claims courts, we think that Claros can do better. And you know what? That's 99% of all the, all the disputes in the world. Mm. We, we just like, we keep focusing, understandably, on the criminal stuff, because that's what we see on Black Mirror and on what we see on CSI. But um, the realist world is that the small guy, the 99% of the problems he has uh, is in small claims, right? Being charged like $100 for something he didn't buy. So, uh, and we think that Claros can help with this by providing lower cost arbitration and transparent arbitration and fast arbitration for this kind of disputes. And if nation states uh, see that Claros can work for that, they will adopt it and they will solve the problems of citizens in a far more efficient way. And in the end, the citizen is going to be happier. So. The, the thing what, that we find in nation states when we try to um, do partnerships and pilots is that so all these legacy systems of the like judges and well, all legal systems uh, are quite heavy and so they tend to see Claro's solution with the game theory and so what, with all the, the new technology we are using they see like weird like what, what do you mean like using jurors randomly selected from the internet like so um there they mostly they don't buy it because they see it like a strange way of solving disputes but of course they al they also saw like bitcoin and cryptocurrency side weird way of doing currency what do you mean that no central bank is going to create the money so what it is going to be created by the internet so we, we right like all, all systems are, have trouble in seeing that a lot of things could be solved by peer-to-peer -peer systems and by crowdsourcing. So in a couple of years, I think we will have won this battle. They will understand that this can work everywhere and they are going to use it. Exactly. I mean, Bitcoin is such a wonderful example because you know, it's kind of it's like kind of, people say, but it's a real money. Of course, if I use it as money and you use it as money and we both accept that Bitcoin is money and we can purchase services for it and pay for things with it, of course, then it is de facto money. And agreements are the same thing. If, if I consider it an agreement and you consider it as an agreement and there is a way to enforce that agreement and resolve disputes around that agreement, then it is a de facto agreement. It doesn't matter what any bank or government or any other person says about it right um so, so it becomes a de facto fact um, so we when we started we were only focused on you know market adoption because the more people who consider it as an agreement and help enforce it the more it is effective and legal system right um but we actually have some early run into like nation states because when the refugee crisis happened in 2014, um, you know, we, uh, because a, a lot of people in BitNation are really passionate about refugees, uh, we were providing them with IDs, so, uh, which, so we had to like follow EU standards for, for identification with, with like the epileptic curve cryptography and uh, all of these things, right? and um you know to basically like help them getting through borders and we developed like a strong kind of ambassador network around that and i mean we had that before but it kind of really tough then and uh with like physical embassies and then we entered into a partnership with estonian e-residency program to build a public notary so so we had, although we were like, we are all, I mean, the core of Bit Nation, I think are nearly all quite hardcore anarchists. We actually early on kind of, I mean, bizarrely had nation states reaching out to us for cooperation. Um, and now, you know, we've kind of uh, 
softened our stance a little bit on it in the sense that we think that in the transition period from a nation state world to a post nation state world, you know, we would like to, to develop the, the technology that we need without getting killed or jailed in the process, you know? So, <laughs> it, uh, you know, quite nice with some diplomacy. <laughs> that, as well. that's being um, out of jail is useful for running the, the company. Right, exactly. <laughs> it helps, really, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Sonia and Kenneth are, are doing some interesting stuff actually on that. So they um, they aim to test both like ID documents, physical ID documents, as well as like smart contracts and actually like legacy with legacy entities in, in nation state jurisdiction and literally test how they react to it. Uh, maybe Sonia, you want to say a bit more on that, Sonia and Kenneth? Yeah, I will. Uh, I will uh, leave to Kenneth about passports and documents. Uh, but I will mention uh, that uh, we are already uh, planning how we will induce uh, certain specific cases, and uh, then we will uh, test them in existing jurisdictions. Uh, for example, I like using the case that if you make a blockchain marriage, and then you go to your national uh, tax office and you ask for tax deductions based on your marriage, if the jurisdictions in which you are uh, is allowing deductions for people who are married. And, uh, or uh, for instance, if you do will, uh, if you make your will uh, also on blockchain, uh, that we go through normal uh, procedure that it's uh, to see that it's recognized and uh, we are creating uh, um, trying to get through cryptographic experts, uh, uh, expertise that will be uh, accepted by the courts and we will try to collect them uh, from uh, most relevant institutions so that it's some kind of objective standpoint on technology and we know that uh, blockchain and technology cannot be nullified. It will be just explained uh, how it works and what does it mean uh, for uh, judges and courts and uh, all the administrators and employees of state institutions because this is something completely new and uh, it has not been implemented in their uh, lifetime so someone has to bring it closer to them and as we are not uh, as bit nation we are not stopped by some kind of uh, procedures as certain uh, state has to go to bring some something new to the system uh, we can be faster and we can uh, be a few steps ahead uh, to show them what it uh, represents and how it functions and what are the benefits and also to invite people uh, to use it as much as possible to see how it lowers the cost and uh, how it simplifies everything and uh, I hope uh, uh, with our market adoption it will it will grow very big and uh, that in few years uh, no one will have to use public notaries anymore uh, that, they, that they will recognize uh, time stamping from Bit nation. Uh, well, only our public nature, of course. <laughs> and also, can I can, think, uh, I think that, mm -hmm, uh, yes. Sonia, let me just say something. I think that what you just said is very important. So, um, uh, this th there is this, this quote, like, um, of this guy named Richard Buckminster Fuller that says that you don't change the world by fighting the existing order, you change it by building a new oh. one that makes the old one obsolete. Yes. So, yes, it, you can make notaries obsolete by showing it that. Is the service of the blockchain is better. So that's yeah. how you change the world, because people will choose you as the de facto thing, and everyone will adapt then. That's yeah, how you change the world. Not like that. I, I expect that it will be a lot of criticism from yeah. the side of public uh, notary. And uh, I also heard that they are actually already investigating how they will implement in their own system blockchain so that they keep the licenses and their existence, but with the new technology. Uh, but we can still fight uh, in a way uh, that uh, they're really not needed. That anyone from home can do this, and that, it's, that the technology is really enough. That you don't need yeah. additional fees. It's it's quite interesting when you take uh, something like you know marriage on on the blockchain, for instance. So, uh, me and James got married on on the BitNation public notary, and you know people always ask, they are like, so um, does this is this legal? And it's like, well, yes, it's legal, of course. It's a written agreement. If you put it in front of any court in any jurisdiction, they will recognize that it's a written and you know agreement that's also uh, obviously 
preserved on an immutable public ledger. So yeah, but does it qualify as a marriage? Well, that's another question. No, it doesn't qualify as a marriage in the sense that we wouldn't get like, you know, maybe tax cuts which some countries give to married couples or something like that. But it do qualifies as an agreement between two individuals that have to be followed, right? So it's, it's kind of a curious case, but it's a kind of typical case too. So, so in case people are not interested in government benefits or anything, but they're just interested in this is how we're going to live, this is how we're going to handle money, this is how we're going to divide our assets, then it's perfectly functional both on blockchain jurisdictions as well as in nation state jurisdictions. Right. Let so me. I have, that's let quite me interesting. Comment something about that, and then I have to go. But so that's very interesting, Sam, because so this discussion about marriage, the world had that before. It was not be, be, between blockchain and the nation state, but it was between the church and the nation state about who has the right to have the not the, the, the registry of who is married to whom. So in that situation, so the the attacker was the nation state and the defender was the church. So now you have the attacker as the uh, so the blockchain and you have the old uh, innovator as the incumbent so yeah. markets change and this affects also into the registries so uh, it's not new it's, ha it's happened before uh, i hope that next time we will uh, when we are the incumbents we will be much more open to innovation than the others <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a really Good historical example. I like that. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Have okay. to go, guys. Now. <laughs> yeah, let's let's wrap it up. Okay, thank you all so much for a great conversation. Um, and uh, during our next call, uh, we can talk more about our about identification and reputation as well, which we started talking about, and and then Kenneth can talk a little bit about physical identity too, like yeah, uh, documents, etc. Because yeah. we are running out of time now. Thank you all so much for participating and uh, see you soon again.